after a mysterious encounter with the risen Jesus, Jerusalem-educated Saul was improbably persuaded to believe in him and invited a few years later to become a full-time missioner. The Lord, who'd entirely reshaped his vision, had chosen him as the right man for a new job to evangelise mainly non-Jewish people. Now he must deploy his talents and energies, despite the challenges. A multicultural Roman Empire meant multiple religions too, but as transport infrastructure developed and provincial cities grew more sophisticated, a mission field was opening up. Promotional tours included the bustling city of Philippi to the northeast of Greece. A former Christian hunter wasn't to everyone's taste, but a Greek-speaking Roman citizen and highly educated Jew was an asset. Newly renamed Paul, with his own dramatic story to tell, this great debater was ideal. Worship traditions from Greece and Rome, mystery cults from the East and Judaism, however, all had several centuries head start on Christianity. Human beings adore novelty, but they're often still stubbornly resistant to change, especially the expensive kind. A radical message of love in a hostile climate, the bizarre tale of a crucified and then resurrected village carpenter, who was also the only God's only human son, wasn't welcome at first. Flashpoints marked its clashes with vested interests, and just as during Jesus' own years, preserving the status quo, even suppression was common. For Paul and co to build a broader church, quite a shake-up would be needed. He was having a lovely dream. Oh, back on my dad's farm, riding in the back of a wagon. Till the going got rougher, the whole thing were rattling, bouncing us about like a, like a loose lemon, till I ended up on the ground. As I sat up, I heard a weird, metallic jangling. Took us a few seconds in the pitch black to realise I were on the floor. Must have dozed off on the bench in the guardroom, long dear. But the floor were vibrating with a low rumble, like thunder, but from below. Find my sword belt, I crawled towards the door, which suddenly flew out and smacked against the wall. The jangling, three hooks full of keys, like bells on a belly dancer's girdle. <laughs> One massive jewel dislodged the whole lot. I groped round for them. E, I was frightened. Roof timbers was groaning, tiles raining down. Somehow I made it to the yard. My ears was ringing, I felt light-headed. Maybe that were last night's plonk. Paving stones grated like a, like a grinding millstone. Prisoners could barely see the cell block. Blimey, gaping hole in the roof. Gable in part rubble, locked door, flattened. I staggered over, feeling queasy. City governors would have us head if the men had escaped. Last two only came in earlier, causing a disturbance with their religious antics. Newfangled. Spooks folks. Romans? Romans cannot bear Jews. Why, Jews, they hear anything unorthodox. As for their stunt with Mystic Meg, no wonder her owners was livid. Party tricks like that were a nice little earner, and thanks to these two, it seemed she lost the knack. Just like that. Oh, I checked the cells earlier. Quite a concert, him singing. Brutus had loved that. But they seemed hypnotised. 
flip and torch inside revealed iron doors all sprung. Impossible. I knew what trouble I'd be in then. I drew my sword. Better DIY than a public execution. Suddenly there's a shout. Jailer, wait. We're all here. It was the short gobby one. I grabbed the light and I peered. There they sat. Never. Chains busted. Security gone. Blinking in the torchlight. That felt like a dream too. Unreal. Would I wake up? So, moving our long stay guests to an undamaged cell, they teased me. Jewish God Squad saved your bacon then, mate. I'd figured. Philippi, too. They were battered and bruised from their flogging. Never mind the quick. But I owed them now. So I took them home to patch them up. In the general panic, nobody bothered. Then, then, I got curious. I hardly bothered with the jailbirds usually. Assumed they were guilty and they deserved it. Asked no questions, just did my job. Kept them banged up. Didn't get involved. <laughs> but there was something different about these. Especially that one with the verbal d- mm -mm. I'd never been a god botherer me. Fancy temples mumbo jumbo. Superstition overactive imaginations. But Paul and Silas just seemed thoughtful, reasonable, placid, kind. So, why were they in trouble? Heaven knows why, but the very name Jesus gave me the shivers. Not guilty, they said, but still ended on a Roman gibbet. Miracle worker, a healer, teacher and a peace. Oh, I recalled hundreds of men I'd locked up, mistreated. They were naught to me, not even so valuable as that slave girl earlier. Paul told us Jesus were the only God's equal, his son, yet he chose to be like us, to make himself nothing alongside the poor, the enslaved, the guilty, even indifferent beggars like me. And then, and then the claimed it returned from the dead and would be back. My head, my head were reeling. Paul, short stuff I, he told me how Jesus had blinded him. Well, he were on the road to Damascus, rounding up the latest followers. <sighs> Probably turn around. And now, seemed he were making the jailhouse rock to break his workforce out. How come? How come I suddenly wanted to join him? Why, he were a god who acted in person, not some lifeless lump of marble in a hilltop shrine. Raw recruit, reform, reform in, rogue, probably. But maybe their god had seen some a value in me. Every bit as imprisoned, enslaved by Roman callousness and prejudice. Jesus had saved his boys. Now they were saving me. Oh. I felt humbled and elated. Surely every knee must bow to you a Jesus then. Every tongue declare him Lord, I asked. Paul, Paul said not for once. He just nodded slowly as if he were, I don't know, taking mental notes. Seeking out and saving the lost was what Jesus came to do. 
and he could do so more widely once his spirit took over the heavy lifting, enlivening the useless and hopeless, waking sleepers, animating the stoniest hearts. This was how he rock and rolled. But since he'd returned to his father, godly power could inhabit even the most unpromising human specimens, like persecuting Paul or the jaded jailer. This was the message of the resurrection then. No one was so lost that they couldn't be found, so chained that they couldn't be liberated, so guilty that they were beyond forgiveness. And that holds true even for us. Now, as the foundations of our world are heaving, maybe legging it isn't the best option.